Hey, welcome back everybody. Have you ever thought about putting an aftermarket shifter in your G-Body? <laughs> Go make some popcorn. That's what we're doing today. As I said, welcome back. It's Hutch from Hutch High Perf. Thank you for joining me. I, from the moment that I uh, got the car, there's a couple things I knew I was going to do. It's going to be a 455 big block. It's going to have a 400 trans, 9-inch rear, and I was putting a shifter in it, different than the manufacturer. So, um, I've had uh, B&M Quicksilver shifters before. Absolutely love them. I've never had a problem with them. And they're perfect for what I want, which is a turbo 400 with a reverse manual valve body. Banging those gears, no problem with that shifter. So, uh, there's a shifter right here. This is the bad boy I'm talking about. This has to go in there. So I've got the center console in to, uh, and that basically what I did was I was checking the fitment, how it is now so i know when i get the uh the new shifter in that the column and the center center column has to that whole console has to fit just a, a certain way so it doesn't look funky when it goes back in i don't want it sitting odd or weird so when i thought about it i'm like you know i'm doing it um it's going to it's probably going to be a little tricky i'm gonna have to do some uh some finagling and, and probably uh, come up with a couple different ways to get it in or or uh, I looked online I looked online I don't have to figure out how to do it someone has done it for me BuickTurboRegal.com uh, they have great tech articles on there if you are looking to modify your G body or just um, do some intricate repairs their tech section on their website is fantastic. And uh, they've got a really good uh, tilt steering column how-to on there. I've also got a video. That's right. It's mine. I, I was so excited. I was like, wow, you know, I'm hit the big time. I'm, I'm on, a, on a legit website, so that's cool. So I don't have to worry about it. Someone's already done it. And... It's a Turbo 400 that they did it in. Uh, it's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, all I had to do was uh, I downloaded the article into a Word document. I'm old school. So I'm thinking um, when, uh, when the interwebs breaks and everything goes wrong, every, every recorded knowledge that we have from like 2000 on is on some server in the sky somewhere all that stuff might be gone. So when I make stuff digitally, I always print out a hard copy. It's just it's how I do it. Anyway, now I've got perfect instructions on how to do it. So let's, uh, let's get in there. God, it's going to be uncomfortable on that metal floor. I'm gonna, I might put something down to kind of cushion it because it's, it's, it's a bear. Anyway, let me get everything repositioned. We'll get inside the car, and then I'm just going to follow the instructions, put this bad boy in. So here I am inside the car. <laughs> this is a little bit uncomfortable, but I'll live with it. So I got I got the center console, uh, all the bolts loosened up, taken out that I had uh, used to hold it down. And basically what I wanted to do was I wanted to get a level in this direction, this direction, and I wanted a level on the uh, the gear stick. So that way, um, when I'm putting the, the new one in, I have an idea, like if it's sitting off the one side or something weird, I'll, I'll be able to figure that out. So let's get this up and out of the way. The instructions say that this portion of the gear shift, like a section about like maybe that big, needs to come out. I'm going to wait on that until we actually 
till we actually get um, get the other one put in place. I'm not cutting anything off, and the the instructions look really really well done. And um, the he has pictures of the finished product, and it's perfect. So uh, I have no doubt uh, that what he says is what we're going to have to do. But I'm taking everything in stages because I, I just don't want to cut anything off the factory piece until I absolutely have to. Um, I'm not afraid to because, honestly, if you see this thing, it's in really rough shape. Um, I'm hoping I, hoping that it cleans up. The chrome trim around here is actually in really good shape. But, uh, but man, it's, it's beat. And I took the... I took the the top portion off. Oh, it is, it is nasty under there. All right, so let's get the shifter linkage done here. So we get this cable off, and everything to the side. Oh, it's there, and then this clip has to come out. Okay, and that's done. So then this will come off, and then when I get this loosened up, 10 millimeter. When I get this loosened up, it should pull right out. And, uh, and that cable will stay right where it's at until I get the new one on because part of the instructions was the cable doesn't line up with the shifter. So there's some finagling that will have to be done with that. But thankfully, they've already done it. So I know exactly what I need to do. It's not bad. All right. So that is the factory shifter. And here is the new shifter. Now, here's one of the issues. This front bracket actually gets in the way of the shifter where it's at. So that needs to be cut off. Yeah, and it looks like there's no way around that. So that is what shall be done. I cut the front pad off so it would sit down flat where it's supposed to. So now what I'm doing is, <laughs> you can see it's all boogered up here, but um, I got some uh, I got some rare earth magnets, pretty strong magnets, and I've also got the the duct tape and everything. I just want it to sit in the in I have it in the spot that I think it's good, um, and I want it to stay here because I need to check to make sure going through the gears there's there's uh there's not any issues or interference or anything. So I just want to make sure that um, the daggone thing stays in place. So hopefully that's going to hold. We're going to find out. So let's get this. I did have to, after test fitting it a couple of times, I did have to cut this piece out um, all the way back, all the way back flush with this side and about maybe, what is that, about an inch or so down from this side here. And there may be some, there looks like a, like a small spot right here on the bottom where there's some interference um, with the, the mounting pad. So it might have to, I might have to trim a little bit off of that, but that's, that's not too bad. So let's get this thing down on here. I used, used these as a witness to kind of line it up. Let's see where my, let's see where my holes are. Let's drive this one down, just so this back will be held in place. Then I can uh, mess with the front. held in place that looks looks relatively straight yeah I think once that goes up okay you know it's interesting too these uh, these columns where they're bolted in they actually bolt 
a little bit off to the <laughs> to the driver's side anyway it's not exactly centered uh, in the hump so anyway I just wanted to make sure it was close enough oh get this this is the scariest part of this entire thing is having this out of the bag and the and the the spot where I had it safely tucked these only came this uh that kind of like I don't know it's like a machined look only came on the 87s and if I break this um, it's probably more than this entire center console if I wanted to replace it anyway so that's that's giving me some heartburn just having this thing out but it need to test fit it all right so that that is where that is at. So if you know anything about the Quicksilvers, there's a, there's a pin off to the side this way. And um, when you pull it up, it goes back and it drops down into the slot where, where, uh, where it's in drive. And then you cycle the gears that way back and forth. And then it's back up to all the way to reverse and into park. So that has to, that has to clear that portion. And that'll be fine, I think. Now, let's see if, let's see if my duct tape is going to hold this thing in place. So right now it's in park. There's plenty of, plenty of clearance in the front, right? Yeah. Plenty of clearance in the front. I just got to make sure that when you cycle the gear all the way back, it doesn't come into contact with this. So hold together. So this is up. That is reverse, neutral, and then down in gear. <sighs> okay. So now it needs to be able to have enough room to cycle the gear back. Yeah. That is. <laughs> All right. I think the placement where I have this thing, I think that's going to work. It cycles through all the gears. There's no interference either side. There's no interference side to side on it. The pin has plenty of room to come up. I think this is going to work. So let me let me uh, let me go through this. So oh no, hopefully this thing holds together. All right. So right now it's in neutral. You can't, it's, it's set up for um, forward gears. It's a, it's a way to stop from accidentally smacking it into reverse while you're running down the, the track. So all the way back, if for a, a, a standard shift where it would be one, two, three for, for a three speed like I have, and then there's neutral, reverse, and park. So what you don't want to do is be going through the gears, first, second, third, and that last one you hit too hard and you slam it in reverse. Not good when you're going like 80 miles an hour. So what it is, it's a lockout. So the worst I can do is go into neutral. I can't get into reverse. I have to, from drive, which, uh, which is here, this is drive. Shifter goes up. You have to pull up, and then you bring it forward. That's neutral, reverse, and then down in the park. That way, there's no, there's no way that you can accidentally shift this uh, into reverse from, from drive. In my case, it's going to be a little different. So from park, I would come up, down in the drive. 
but I have a reverse manual valve body, so I have to do the shifting myself. First gear, second gear, third gear. Well, the great thing is this uh, ratchets its way through the gears, so it's not like this thing actually physically moves into each one of those gears. When you pull this back, it ratchets at one gear, and then it comes back and, and goes into this neutral position. From uh, first gear, once, uh, <laughs> once the light turns green, you just take off. And when you go to hit second gear, you just bang, second gear, third gear. Don't have to worry about it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's dummy proof. <laughs> That's what I need. So it's going to work great. Here's a shot from inside the car. As you can see, it does a fairly good job of centering it right up where it's at. So I'm happy with that. So we can take this plate back off. And this is how it looks on the inside. See where I had to cut to be able to get it to fit. It's not bad though. All right. So we're good where we're at. Happy with that. Look at the crud in there. Ugh. This thing's going to get a very, very hot bath. Anyway, I'm uh, just going to get this center console off and then we'll mark and drill the holes. All right. So I've got it bolted down. I used uh, two bolts from the kit. I actually had to run out to the hardware store and get longer bolts for this side because it actually sits up to be able to make it level. It sits up off the, the hump where it's at. So physically, let's look at the dimensions. So physically, if you look back here, you can see where this, these two mounting holes, the bracket, that bottom uh, bracket for the shifter is just to the left of uh, where those holes line up. And just about, well, you can see where this bracket comes down. Now, yours may be different. You're going to have to check it if you're doing something like this, but mine fit right to the edge of where this is welded to, to the floor pan. And let's see some of the modifications you have to make. So if you look down here, I had to take, I had to take something and cut that out. I drilled it out because let me show you. So this is this is the cable. So the clip will go on here, and that's where, that's where it's going to go through. Here's the bracket. The bracket also had to be modified highly. Uh, this, the bracket, when it came, has, has a big hole on this side, and it has a smaller hole on this side. So I guess for the, what is it, the 80, 81 through whatever uh, Camaro and Firebird that this actually fits for, uh, the cable would slide through this smaller hole, come out this side and then you'd snap the clip on and that would hold your shift cable in. And then there's this hole here would actually, there's a, there's a hole, oh, there's a hole right there and it would bolt on this way and then it would, uh, cable would come through and, and hook to this stub here. But this cable with the length won't work that way. And thankfully the instructions were very detailed about exactly what to do. So, it won't, and one of the reasons I had to cut the, the, the slot out is the factory cable has uh, these, these braces on this side molded into it that I guess like braces this piece that uh, fits up against the bracket that you put the clip on so it thing won't snap and then the cable's no good. So I actually took a file. I had to file some of that down just a little bit and it helped make it fit and then... On this, since it, no way it was fitting through the, the stock hole that this thing came with, I had to cut this thing way out. But you know what? It's no big deal. Uh, it's just a, just a piece of metal bent in a U with some holes in it. I mean, it's nothing. So that made that fit. And what happens now is when the cable goes in, it goes in this way and, well, yeah, like that. So it goes in like that. And then you actually bolt it up and use a spacer in between here and bolt it up from the back. And uh, I'll, I'll bolt this thing together so we can see. Anyway, so that, that is the basic mounting of it. And uh, the, the, the opening for where the, the gear shift lever is on the, um, on the factory one, 
as long as you had the bar in the center, you were you were good to go. But this one has this pin on the side. So the pin fits down in this slot. So when this comes up, it the pin drops down into that slot. And then this right here is uh, is what holds this thing in place and it's your ratcheting mechanism. So that way when you pull it back, it shifts it back and then when you let go of the stick, it ratchets forward and it's ready for your next gear. And then you snap it again. Same thing going forward. All right, and that's why I love these things so much. Because when you get in the car, especially for mine, it's, it's a Turbo 400, it's a reverse manual valve body. So it's in first gear and all I have to do when I go to shift is just hit it. Hit it. Second gear, third gear, I'm done. Slowing down, go back up to second back up to first don't have to think about it never have to worry if you if you accidentally hit it a, a, a fourth time you're going into neutral and, and it doesn't you can't do anything past that it's it's stuck in neutral until you go back in the drive if you're in neutral you can't pull it up and accidentally go into reverse it has to be in drive then it goes up then you reverse back into park I love this thing it is so easy to operate once you figure that out and uh, it's just a, it's a joy to use and it just takes a ton of abuse and i have abused these things before so all right let me uh let me swing around and get the cable in and i'll show you kind of how the cable bolts up to this there is the cable bolted up uh, you can also see i had to use a couple of washers and uh just a, a nut large enough that it slipped on the bolt to be able to hold it in to keep this level uh, for the center console. So here we look at the bracket. So like I said, this, this bolt hole here would usually be wedged right here and it would be bolted on and this whole bracket would be in front of this, I guess because the, the Camaro Firebird, uh, the shifter cable uh, doesn't have this length that this one does. So anyway, so the, the workaround for that Again, a set of bolts in here to use as a spacer and a long enough bolt and nut to get through and it just holds the thing in place. Open up the back end and then open up the notch on the shifter and then cable goes in, put your clip in, everything is in order. Let's see if I can, so, goes in all the gears, doesn't jam back into park. It's looking good. Let's get the front in place. There you go. All right, where oh, here's the here's the shifter knob that came with the shifter. Now, if you know me, even when I modify something, I have to modify the modification. It's just it's just how I think. So this uh, this shifter ball is not going to be what's going on the car. I've got another shifter ball that uh, I luckily found before they quit making them. I can't find it now, but I got one. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to show you later. Anyway, this thing isn't going to be used. But this gives you an idea. If you are sitting in the vehicle over here, that is basically how it looks. I tell you what does not look too bad. I went on G-Body Parts and I have a new uh, shifter laminate I'm going to put in here and it's actually a three-speed reverse manual valve body plate that's going to stick on this spot. Um, the one thing you're not going to be able to do is use the uh, the red indicator that's on here. It just it does not line up with what, what actual gear you're in. But honestly with this shifter you never you never have to guess too hard. You know where you're at. If you're uh, if you're as in depth um, in building the car as I am, um, you'd, I've never looked at the gear shift indicator in a car in a center console in my life. I just I know what gear I'm in. So anyway, doesn't matter. Anyway, shifter is in. It's centered up. Oh, I think it looks beautiful. And what you do? Let's see if we can't go through the gears. So we're in reverse. Or, I'm sorry, we're in park, up into reverse, neutral, down into gear. And then 
you're driving down the road, hit the gas. You're in first gear, second gear, third gear, slowing down, second gear, first gear, back to park. It's just that easy. Love this thing. And it turned out beautiful. I almost forgot the slider. So the, the slider is, um, well, you got to make some modifications to it. The, the slider would have this bracket like uh, made as part of it. So as you shifted, this thing would move and always shine the light right on the indicator that you wanted. That's got to go. And you've got to cut out the slot to fit for the new handle. And you got to cut out a little side for that bar that comes up. So let's see. Let's get this in here, put the back in place. All right, let's get this back on and see how she looks. Oh, let's put the, let's put the ashtray cover down. Look at that. Look at that. All right, let's put this ridiculous looking ball shifter back on it. There it is. That is a pretty neat install. Like I said, the only thing left to do is put my new shift indicator on to kind of match up with what the transmission looks like. That is not bad. Let's see. So the has room for the bar to come out. Down in place. That's not bad. And it's a little, I mean, you see the cutout, it's a little rough, but um, I may think of something else. But for now, for now, that's good. Taking off. Ah, bah, bah. It's, it's perfect, man. Perfect. I'm not complaining. I'm happy with that. Well, this thing turned out beautiful. I absolutely love it. This is going to be a nice addition to the vehicle. And I didn't even have to do a whole lot of head scratching and brain thinking to do it. Because BuickTurboRegal.com did it for me. Whoever posted this article on here, I wish you had left your name because I'd thank you right now. But man, um, this is easier than I thought it was going to be. And uh, from what the article said, they still use the same factory shift cable and the same bracket down below and everything worked fine. So um, there's no engine and trans in the vehicle, so I can't, I can't speak to that until it's actually in the car. But man, I do like that. Anyway, that's all I got. This is Hutch from Hutch High Perf. Appreciate you coming along, and i uh, see you on the next one. Oh, yeah, down to bottom. Subscribe, like, hit the bell, do all the things. Leave a comment. I don't care. Whatever you want, man. I, uh, I love interacting with you guys. Uh, try to answer everyone's questions while I'm still small enough to uh, be able to do that. So, anyway, that's all I got. Go buy a T-shirt. It helps me out. See ya.